Right. Well, I wonder. Okay. So that's the same. Okie dokie. So I don't know what uh, that's all about. That's still working. Right. Well, I don't know if anyone can hear me. Let me see if I can find out. Uh... Oh, dear. Right. I'm going to try and uh, try and lay out my layout. <laughs> so I lay out my layout by printing it on A3 and then laying it out. Um, so I've, I've laid out a few bits and bobs already. Uh, Hopefully it all just comes together. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah, so the way I do it, um, uh, I just tell it to sort of print to the edge, and then there's a little bit the printer can't print. So I just don't worry about that. So if I put the pieces of paper next to each other, if I put the pieces of paper next to each other, it should all sort of line up. Please do that.
Be good. Um, this bit. Don't know who's in. Say hello if you're watching. Right. Well, I think that's probably about 
that right now. Sounds working, is it, John? Oh, well, that's good. That's a good start. Right, you'll see. I've started. Uh, I've started cracking on with what I'm doing. Much better. Right. Well, I've, I think the sound's coming from the microphone, although. I wondered if there's like a delay on the video, so uh, the sound's going to come straight from the uh, from the laptop, and there'll be a delay on the video. So I expect I'm out of sync now. If I clap the hands, it's probably out of sync. Anyway, let me know. Right. Well, let me. I'll tell you what I'm doing. Um, so. Yeah, I've, I've got a piece of MDF here. We can talk about whether MDF is a good idea or not. I've got a piece of MDF here, um, and I've printed out this uh, part of my layout. Um, near enough. Okay. Um, and uh, anyway, and I want to uh, I want to just show you where it, where it goes. Another piece there. And this one will come around to join up. So uh, you can probably see that. Uh, so, but I want to do it with a single piece of MDF. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to mark the mark the the root, um, and I also want to get out of it a little square just to fit in here. Um, where I've got this gap. So uh, just trying to work out how I'm going to do that. And with one bit of MDF, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? When I printed these, oh, I don't believe it. Oh, I think I'm going to have to print these again. Uh, it, the software I use, I can print it with grid lines on, and obviously with grid lines on, that's a lot better, because um, I can then line up the grid lines to know the bits of paper in the right place, and they're sort of, you can do grid lines at sort of 100 mil, uh, 100 mil grid, so you can, you can print it out and then measure it and make sure that the printout is exactly uh, one to one uh, against real life. Um, oh, that's annoying, but it's not printed out. Uh, so I can't really do that. There we go. So yeah, I, I was going to tell you a bit about about this uh, bit of threaded rod. Um, so I've got a piece of threaded rod here, and it goes for a hole in this board. Um, this board, uh, obviously, I was able to mark out on, on paper like I have here. So that hole has come, has come off the design. Um, and there's another one just there. Um, so those holes are in exactly the right place that I want them to be. Um, and underneath here, I've put in a girder um, and another girder across here. See the end of it there. I drill that hole through and then through the girder. So that is that is a support for the base of this threaded rod, and the same there. Um, and actually, on the plan, there's three more: one, two, 
three. Just um, yeah. So actually, I need to uh, when I when I put this all together, I need to keep them at least until I've installed the girder under there and then put the hole in the girder. Does that make any sense? Um, anyway, you move. And then the point is my, my threaded rods are going up in just the right place to hold my helix. So the helix is going to go around, around there, around there, uh, around there, and then obviously around. Um, and it's actually a, it's a staggered helix. Um, so I've got three, three threaded rods there. The outer two are going to support the first loop. And then the whole helix moves this way a little bit. Um, and then the next, uh, you know, the inner two uh, threaded rods will support it. Um, which makes things a bit more complicated than they, uh, they need to be, perhaps. Well, there we go. Right. Doing... Yeah, I can, I'll, I'll take this off and show you, actually. Never know, you might be interested. So I've put, a, I've put a little piece of track, track across there, so for the first time I could go with a bit of rolling stock uh, across that gap, so I'm pleased. Um, let me try and get these rail joiners out. This is the old trick of sliding the rail joiner all the way along the rail. So you can then lift out a section of track. So you see all these techniques people sort of talk about and show you and so on, but until you've actually done it once yourself, you don't quite know whether it's going to work or not. There you go, there's an insulated rail joiner I've lost. Does anyone else use this? This thing about having a, a bent piece of rail for, for fitting rail joiners. You do that? Let me see what I'm saying. You have a, uh, have a piece of rail and you just make a cut in the top and then bend, bend it up at an angle. No idea if you can see that or not. Um, and, uh, oh, hello, Lars. Um, and then you can use it for fitting rail joiners. So you put the rail joiner on the end of the piece of rail. And then that holds it on. And then you can fit the other end to where you want it to go. And take it out. And that's a lot easier than trying to get your nails in there. Right. Oh dear. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's that. So that piece of track. So that's just the right length. So that's good. Um, but this, uh, this board I haven't tied down yet. So. The whole thing upside down. There we go. I'll, I'll show you what we're up to. So I've, I've put droppers all along here for the, uh, the lines. That's good. Um, I've been wiring up all my uh, point motors um, and I've connected them up here to a um, accessory decoder. That's a DCC concepts one, uh, so that's all good. Um, uh, I've tested all of that. Yeah, I was talking about putting these girders in. So here's uh, here's one of those girders. Can't really see it. Move this across. There we go. Yeah, so 
there's one of those girders. That's nice and nice and stiff. And uh, there's the hole to hold my um, to hold my threaded rod. Uh, and another one there. Um, I need to put another hole just there, so perhaps I'll just put a girder across that way. Um, and then other ones over there. Um, but that's good. There you go. It's a shame I don't speak uh, Danish, Lars, but it's nice to have you in anyway. Oh. Right. So, yeah. Um, so I just need to I just need to mark out what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll put another another support in there just to hold the the outside edge. Um, this. So we. Told you I'm using six mil MDF, which is a really bad idea because it sags and all that stuff. Um, and I think probably if I started again, I probably wouldn't bother. I'd probably use uh, ply. But I think even six mil ply is probably going to sag a bit. Um, so what? Uh, anyway, what I, I've put these these ribs in just to stop it sagging. So hopefully that's uh, that's helpful. Right. Um, well, what I what I was going to do. Uh, was to to start gluing this down. But actually, um, I'm a bit a bit hesitant to because it hasn't got the grid lines on. Far out we're gonna go. If I just do it to the edge of the paper. I'm sure it might be that way. That line up. That's good. I suppose I, I can I can measure across these because uh, I know these are supposed to be three hundred mil across, three hundred mil apart. Um, so I can, I can test that. Always three hundred mil. Again. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna just get on and do it. Okay. Why not? But it's only it's only a wiggly road bed. It's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So what I do, I use a tiny Dot of wood glue. Um, just a smear, really. Just a, just a little knob on each bit of paper just to hold it in place. Um, once that's gone off, that'll, that'll just hold it. I love. You're welcome back, John. What are you stuffing your face with? Oh. Yeah, so hopefully that will just. Well, I'll crack on. I think if I 
If I just line it up by eye, stir fried noodles made by the missus, very tasty. Fantastic. It's leftover shepherd's pie for me. I've been making the sound as well. That's the nature of my life these days. Make sure this is my distance apart. There's a little bit of a gap. If I have like a big potter type thing. I wouldn't have this problem. I could just print the whole thing on one massive sheet of paper. That must be a thing. I mean, how do you do that? How do you, uh, how do you get your plan on like a bigger piece of paper? I suppose you could get a little print shop or something. Wouldn't you? There we go. That's exactly right on that. Exactly right there as well. Just what I need. All right. So what have you all been doing then? Oh, for making snowmen. Back to. Uh, Back to having fun in the lockdown. I'll say, I think there's a lot of people modelling uh, in the lockdown. I know my, uh, my cork sales have gone through the roof since. Uh, well, they. They were up about three times, three times in uh, November, when that lockdown came in, and then uh, again when we, uh, when the current lockdown came into in January, I think my sales are up not quite as much as November, uh, but I still sold an awful lot of cork. You applied for jobs, got an interview. Oh no. Oh my old job, I'm sorry mate. What uh, what sort of work did you do before you lost it? Job market must be really hard at the moment, I expect. Airbus warehousing. Right, so that's working for where Airbus, is it? I can see how that might be a difficult job to keep in the current situation. So what, you're down in the West Country, you're in Bristol somewhere. Is that where the Airbus are? Bristol? That's where they used to make wings or something, isn't it, for Airbus? Those are K and N, 
not heard of them. Turndown's been hard. Hit hard. Yeah. Well, they, say, well, they say about you know YouTube, don't don't give up the day job. <laughs> Don't think, don't think I think I'll ever make any money off YouTube. Um, but uh, so I make a little bit of money with my with my pork sales. Um, so that's a good start. Right, I'm quite pleased with that. Kuhl and Nagel do Airbus Logistics. All oh, right, okay. Wow. Where's that base then? Yeah, that's uh, that's down near Bristol, isn't it? Well, um, I'm sorry to hear it's all gone a bit beat on for you, uh, John. I'm sure something will come up. Glad to get out, really. Interview with the cafe admin. All right. So there's something a bit different for you. We're going for a bit. Ah, uh, this was wrong. position this right is a bit tricky, I've got to say. Christian charity thing. All right. So it's like a charity cafe. How did the, uh, how did the interview go then? Whoops. Did you say you've had the interview or not? Oh, you've got one coming up. Right, okay. So when is it? When's the interview? I'm just going to go and get a tool. I'm going to be a moment. Thirsty. Yeah, well, good luck, mate. So it's, uh, it's tough time for everyone at the moment. I'll feel for you. All right. Now, 
think uh, what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? What I normally do is I mark the centre line, uh, and then I use that. Uh, so uh, I think if I just get a hammer, I've got an owl here, so I can use that. But, um, Use that to make. Oh, see. I need boxes for the tools. I use that to, to mark the centre line on the way down. Uh, so that's good. Uh, just do it every now and again. Quite good, this the I used to use a, um, I used to use like a nail held with the pies, but actually this is much better tool for doing it. So if there's a better way of doing this, I'd love to know what it is. I know some, some people, they cut the line and they peel back the piece of paper and then draw. I think if you have more than one line to cut, to mark, that would be difficult. I suppose you start on the outside, don't you? Do that one and the next one, next one. But I don't know how it will work with several bits of paper. I suppose it's easier if you've got one big, uh, one big sheet. Oh, dear. there we go. Is he, is he, does your missus work, John? Have you got an income coming in at all? Is it just you? What I do is I um, yes, yeah, so if I had the grid lines, I mark them as well. That helps me position everything. Um, but I'll just I'll mark these cross, you know, the, the bit of reference for the beams as well. So that once I've cut this out, I can then I'll then know where it's supposed to cross these. Got my plans L girder with a raised trap bed. So you need a method. Um, this is a pretty contrasted. Yeah, I could. I can see. Uh, yeah, I can see. COVID being pretty stressed. Got two kids renting. Right. Yeah, it's about it's about purpose and self esteem as well, isn't it, John? Um, yeah, if you're doing if you're doing L girder, well, I'm doing L girder, but without the L, I should have had a, a side piece really to keep all these uh, these things these things uh, straight. They wobble a bit like this. Um, I suppose I could I could put the L's in um, if I wanted, but I mean one, once I've secured the track bed, uh, you know, it's like this bit won't. That one doesn't move side to side. Now it's attached to this. Um, yeah, the way the way I see it is, uh, I cut the pieces of sub road bed. And they can be whatever shape they need to be, and then. Uh, I just need to mark where they cross the frame. So I position the sub row bed relative to the frame. 
you know, put the risers in the right place. I think, to be honest, it, you know, apart from the point work, it kind of doesn't really matter because if it's going from here to there, you know, you sort of make up where it goes, really. Um, where I've got to be careful is like the, obviously this is on the lower le lowest level and I've got helix going up and I have other things. And then I'm going to use, uh, you yeah, know, put risers in and threaded rods and things in various places. So I'm, you know, I need to make sure I don't end up needing to put a riser, you know, into where there's uh, some track is. I'm using any rail, you're mapping out the risers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, if you've got more than one level and you've got sort of hidden tracks underneath, I think it, it'll pay to, to work out where your risers need to be. There's a lot of precision sort of going in, you know, to marking this centre line. And it seems a bit silly. But then, you know, the whole point is I've, I've used curves that are of a, a certain radius or no less than a certain radius, you know, with his easements and so on. And if I don't try and mark the centre line, then what's the point of designing on a computer in the first place? Try and get it right. I think it's about working out what's important and what isn't. Now, what's going to make a difference? Yeah, I see. Blocks, uh, bits of subroad bed where there's. Uh, Yeah, this is a sub road bit, but there's lots of point work, and we all see that all needs to go together. Um, but in between the bits of point work, it doesn't matter so much. Um, so obviously I've got, I've got that piece and the other piece that goes at the end here, but all the bits in between, it doesn't matter so much. Um, Then I've got, I'll have another double junction on two wide points and a crossover. Um, so I'll do all that as one piece. But then just join them up, doesn't really matter. The, the other bit where it crosses the, the frame and you've got risers, obviously you can work out the exact height at that point. So you know sort of to the millimetre how big your riser needs to be. And it's also important to get that precise. There we go. So that's my centre line. I'm just doing these frames. I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see, but I've got three spots here where. Uh, I've got threaded rods to go through, so I think I'm going to just mark, mark them. And I'll keep them on the board. Um, so if I, if I keep that whole section, I can cut it off later. Once, uh, once they're in, but I'll, I have to put a girder, I'll put a girder in or whatever to install them in, and then once, once I've done that, then uh, I've drilled the hole in the girder, then I can, I don't need the MDF in that area. You've got hidden boards, but under flat top boards. 
got hidden boards under flat top boards, so risers are on the same side, this one side of that. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to go and get something. Right, so I'm making a bit of progress now. Um, which is where I did mark the corners of this frame. And hopefully, it will come together. So I've been working on a, I've been working on a video for you. All. I hope to have it out this Friday just passed, but I can never get on the computer to do the video editing because my boy, my son, uh, he's uh, he never he never lets me on basically. <laughs> um, he's always busy playing computer games or something. So, uh, yeah, that's frustrating. Right. I'll do the outside edge of this as well. This is going to work. I don't know where to cut this off. Some very computer games. Werewolf Tycoon. All oh, right. Yeah, I used to. I used to be a software engineer myself, actually. Um, but I was never in uh, games development. I used to write. Uh, I used to write mods for, for games that I play. Um, I used to play uh, Kerbal Space Program. I did some work on the on the flight computer for that. And a few others, a few other mods. Right, I'm not quite sure what else I need to mark, to be honest. Difficult this because I, I don't need more than the thin strip, um, and I'll reinforce it underneath anyway. But um, the uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll put a I'll put a reinforcing thing under it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the problem is if it's thin, I don't want to make it too wide because then I've got less access up from underneath. The whole point is that I can get, you know, stick my hand up. Um, but, you know, if it's too thin, whenever anything derails, it'll just fall, fall to the ground. I suppose I've got carpet, but, you know, it's not great, is it? Okay, I'm just going to mark out what I'm going to cut and what I'm not going to cut. So I want to keep the, the inside of the concave curves so that I can put sort of reinforcing beams across. You need that for the outside as well. So you can actually the other things I am trying to keep it lightweight. I'm trying to keep it lightweight, um, so I don't want to put in unnecessary uh, bits of board that just makes it adds to the weight. There we go. That will just work. I expect. You enjoy my videos. Thank you. Uh, me too. Software dev. Oh, you, you do. All right. Software dev, I mean. Yeah. Have you built many layouts? My pro seems pretty experienced. Um, this is my first layout. Um, well, I, 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 I used to do it when I was like a teenager or when I was a kid. And I stopped when I was about 15. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, um, but I'm going very slowly. I mean, I started, I started designing this about a year ago. Actually, it's a bit more. About, around about the start of last year. And I, I, I cut my first piece of wood um, on the last day of January. Um, I did it that night, uh, sort of Brexit evening. Uh, I thought, well, you know, perhaps I need a new hobby then. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, so I started then. Um, and there we go. Where you, if you watch some of my videos, where, where are you up to? What have you seen? Uh, think of the, uh, I'm thinking my, my approach to the video editing seems to change quite a bit. Trouble is, I never, I don't plan my videos. I just sort of film what I'm doing while I'm doing it, and then see what happens. Really, have only got a couple to go. Oh wow, well, okay, you've watched most of them. Then. Oh well, good on you. Thanks for that. Um, 
Yeah, I think learning is okay. Still, takes a long time, I think. Right. I'm ready to go with this. You're using Divi tracks, right? Automation JMRI. I haven't looked at JMRI. I mean, I, you know, I know it's, uh, I know what it is. You know, it's open soft, open source Java. Uh, you know, equivalent to iTrains or Prey Controller. Um, so yeah, I mean, it should be, should be free, and so it should work well. But I don't know. I, I get the impression iTrains and Train Controller are a bit more polished. Um, oh wow, we even spent ages planning it. Yeah, I mean, because this is my first layout, I, I'm sort of at a point where I've just got to have a go at building things and making mistakes myself. But I'm not going to build a layout and then destroy it and build another one. So I've got to sort of build the layout that I want. And it's difficult because the, the sensible thing would be to have a sort of start a layout. Uh, I suppose you can build a tiny little thing. I don't know. Um, silly thing is, it's, it's the house I live in is not my house, so one day I'll probably have to move. <laughs> Which is why I'm, I'm trying to make it... Uh, um, Portable. So I've got I've got these two frames, and I mean they're big, uh, but they're not. I mean, I can't mind to pick it up. There we go. I can. I can pick the whole thing up myself. Um, so if I take the legs off and turn it sideways, and there's a there's a door straight to the garden, you know, through there, so uh, shouldn't, shouldn't have too much trouble just getting it straight out the door when it comes time to move. I put the legs back on, and I just need, I need a corner that's large enough. Put the legs back on, stand up again. Um, so it's not, it's not ideal, but it should be portable. Portable. Movable, I think. I, I wouldn't want to take it to a, uh, an exhibition, put it that way. Right, I'm going to go and get a jigsaw and make a hell of a lot of noise. Uh, let me just make sure I can cut the other piece of one. There. Uh, what was it? 32 by 20, 23. I think you want to make yours deconstru deconstructible. What does that mean? What take you mean take it take it apart and put it back together, or just that you rip it to bits? Right, I'm going to go and get my um, I'm going to go and get my jigsaw. Uh, so this is going to be noisy. Let's see. And so. On. Back in a minute.
So it's right, find the jigsaw's flat. The jigsaw is flat. So I can't do that because I've got a chunk. I'm going to plug the battery in there. Right, that's it, so I can't cut that, that's enough. Um, oh so what I can think about doing is putting a girder in here. Else so I, I was thinking about changing uh, the height of my helix or the the um, the rise of my helix. And if I did, it would take off. Would it work out four and a half centimeters. We'll be taking ten mil off per circuit, and it goes round. Once, three times, it might be about four mil. So that would bring it down to there. So I got I got the problem with sort of how how do I do the scenic? Um, you know, between the lower level and the higher level. And actually, if I bring the higher level down a bit. That makes it a bit easier. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'll do that right now. Hmm. That might also be useful. Long enough to run along there. Now, why does plywood warp like that? It shouldn't be. Because it's crap quality, I suppose. Oh, I think I need, um, I just need better quality. Uh, better quality plywood to start with. They warp in the opposite direction. Glue together, that could make a straight piece, I suppose. Is that straight? Oh, it's got, it's got a 
slight bedroom there. Right. I was a bit wary about where I put my coffee cup. Um, I don't want to spill it on the MDF. <laughs> Doing all the MDF. It's going to be time to get the saw out. Uh, I got this. Uh, I got this tripod that's also uh, it's got some lights mounted on it. And I got uh, I've also got uh, a light fitting, uh, so just six LED spot bulbs. Um, that means I can I can direct light a bit better onto different parts of the room depending on where I'm filming. Uh, so that works well. Right, that's good. I'm sort of getting ready to use the saw, I think. Uh, so I spend all my time tidying up. Good that I do the soaring in here. I mean, once once I've got scenery and stuff, I wouldn't want to be getting uh, sawdust all over the actual layer. It can't be good. Oh. Right. Well, I think I think one of those will probably do for. Position, I think we've been glued the screw. Um, JMRI is still definitely still in development platform for automation. All oh, right, okay. With some newbies. Right, so do you know do you know a lot about JMRI then, do you, John? You're a JMRI person? Can I give myself 
such a good effect. I've been trying to get Jeremy to play ball for some time. Yeah, you see, I think that's, you know, I mean, like, it's fun and that, but actually what I want to do is build a railway. I don't want to, like, spend all day getting frustrated with, um, uh, you know, not being able to, with software problems. You know, I don't want to deal with software that doesn't work for this. I mean, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy that software is going to work. So, right, I'm going to turn the um, saw on and the... Uh, and the Hoover, so it's going to make a lot of noise. Uh, okay. Looking for a pushing stick. Right. So, in case anyone's watching, he doesn't know what they're doing. This is a table saw, and it's amazingly dangerous. Um, and uh, you should play with it if you don't know what you're doing. And I don't really know what I'm doing. But I'm going to play with it anyway. So if you see me cut the hand off, you can me an ambulance, all right? Yeah, all right, take care, John. All the best. so noisy. 